required by federal law to develop a new 20-year horizon transportation plan every five years. So this year, we are kicking off a 2040 transportation plan. What is transportation going to look like in Valdosta and Lowndes County in the year 2040? That's the question we're going to be asking ourselves over the next two years. We currently have hired a consultant to develop a socioeconomic study for us to find out what is our population going to look like um, in the year 2040. Um, how many people are we going to have? Um, we, in our last transportation plan, we said that we we're going to have by 2035, I believe it was 135,000 residents here in Lowndes County. Well, we're well above our pace to meet that number. Um, so we're having to reevaluate ourselves where we at in the next uh, 25 years. We're, out, we're working uh, to develop a, a brainstorming agenda, if you will, over the next six months. Um, we're working on what to call it yet, and my first meeting is coming up later this month, and I'm not sure what we're going to do with that meeting, <laughs> but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, but we want, to, we want to ask the public, um, stakeholders, um, our elected officials, what do you want to see in transportation? What do you want to see in this community? We're actually going to be working with Lowndes County, Valdosta, and the other four cities in Lowndes County to develop a community assessment of looking across the broad spectrum of what is needed in this community. What are your desires? Not just transportation, but healthcare-wise, economic development-wise, um, housing-wise. You name it, we want to ask that question so we have the most broad picture. And then we can pull transportation impacts out of that. But maybe that transportation impact is actually a housing impact as well. So we want to be able to look at all of those across the board because they do have impacts on one another. Back on the table uh, behind Lou there, we, I've got a sign-up sheet. If you guys want to sign up um, to be on our mailing list, please do put your name on that. I know we've got probably got several of you already, but uh, please do sign up on that sheet um, because we do want to get your information if you want to participate in this uh, process. Later this month, we're going to start a, a, a public comment period. We're going to host an open house on our transportation improvement program. Every five years we develop our long range transportation plan that has hundreds of millions of dollars of projects and you're, you begin to look at it and get overwhelmed. You're like, how are we ever going to build this 20 years out or 10 years out or even five years out? Well, we actually have another document. Um, it's called the transportation improvement program. That is the you might want to think about it as the checking account for the State Department of Transportation. We develop our projects and we say well, we're going to put this money into the bank and once it's in that document, the state can essentially write their checks. They can hire their uh, consultants to do the designs. They can hire their attorneys to go and buy the right of way. Then they can hire their contractors to go out and build the, the project. But that pro the projects, if they're receiving federal funds, have to be in that transportation improvement program, or the state DOT cannot write their checks. This year, um, we actually have quite a robust schedule uh, of projects to build. Well over $120 million to be invested into Lowndes County in the next four years. Um, they're looking at buying right-of-way and doing construction at exit 22, exit 29, exit 11, and exit two, all three or all four of those interchanges will be completely reconstructed um, to provide better access. Um, I know on, at exit 22, if you come up to that and want to make a left back towards Wiregrass, you just go. You cannot see anything. <laughs> you, just, you just take. You just go. Um, so that's one of the corrections that's going to be made at that at those interchanges. Um, we've also got public transit in there, um, looking at the operations and funding our public transit for our four county, or our three counties. Uh, Lanier County does not currently have public transit. Um, but also looking at our region-wide uh, transit for uh, the elderly community, 
uh, that we provide through the regional commission, that's, that money is in there as well. One of the big ticket projects that you're going to see in there, and I'll explain why it's going to be in there, um, is Highway 133 in Brooks County. It's going to be included as an informational project only. It is not, we're not going to approve funding for that project. Because we're bringing in Brooks County right now, we're in the middle transition period uh, as far as the state EOT is concerned. And we haven't quite got all the paperwork done to make them official. So they actually are going to be widening Highway 133 from Troopville Road to Moultrie uh, beginning next year. So that is one project you'll see in our transportation improvement program uh, that we're providing for informational purposes but it's also going to be a, a major construction project in our region. Um, as I said, I've, I've, Gretchen was able to hand out, hand out our newsletter, which kind of was a good recap of our uh, projects that we've done over the last year. Um, but also, I encourage you to go to our website. We've worked very hard to make sure all of our information is up on our website. I've got my business cards back there if you guys do have any questions. Uh, and you can contact me at any time. No, Lou, you come and see me every other month or so. <laughs> and that's what we like. We want to hear from you. Um, but I do want to stop now and open it up for any questions that anybody might have. I have some questions. I always have questions. <clears throat> Is Ashley Street one of the crash streets? I always see a crash on Ashley Street. You know, it's sort of by the McDonald's there, Burger King people pull out and something they crash together. I, I don't know the list off the top of my head. There are a couple of intersections on Ashley Street, though that are on that uh, top 20 high crash location lists. Um, and we can get that information for you. It's on our website. But, okay. Yeah. There are several along Ashley. I do know that. The money you were talking about for uh, 8 to 22, uh, I know some of that's federal funding. You know, would it be federal funding money coming from I-75? Was yes. it changed that globally? Because I know yes. that it's changing a lot globally. Yes, that is a federally funded project. In fact, all of the projects in our transportation improvement program this year are federally funded. 80% federal funds, 10%, I'm sorry, 80% federal funds, 20% state funds. Every once in a while, you'll see some local funds uh, interspersed in there. Um, for instance, I think exit 22, there's $2 million in local funds that actually might be the power companies moving their Line. lines. That's, it's not power, Georgia Power's money is not federal and it's not state, so it's local. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we'd have to have 500 columns in our spreadsheet. <laughs> we try to keep that down. Corey, what's the best way to report dangerous intersections? What, or, or intersections you have concerns about? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Give me a call. We've actually had several uh, people do that. Give us a call. We will write a letter to the uh, responsible jurisdiction, whoever that might be. Um, and a, a good example of what we've done in the past is the intersection of Huntley Drive and Bemis Road, um, up by Taco Bell on Bemis Road. There were some concerns about that intersection, and we had, they actually came out and re, re striped and did some construction on Bemis Road to make site distance is better. Uh, so that was one example of things. Just a, a citizen called us up and the DOT and the city went out and looked at it and implemented some quick changes. Uh, yeah. You guys don't handle you guys bad word. But if it, the traffic lights you you don't control no, no, I, I don't control the traffic lights. Um, this is saying along with the roads. What we do do uh, programs with that, um, and of course, if you're building a new road that has a traffic light, of course, that's included in our funding. But we work with the city of Alvasta or the state or the county, whoever owns that traffic signal. Um, and of course, the city of Alvasta has their synchronized uh, signal system. If you've never been to the Traffic Management Center, um, here in, in October, they're going to be doing a public tour of the Traffic Management Center. I don't know the date or the time, but that'd be something to look out for. Um, that is actually a, a very interesting facility to go see 
in one little room, you can watch the entire city and see how traffic moves uh, through the entire city. So, yeah. Yes, I want to ask a question. I'm um, out in the county, in Clyde, and we have like a four-way lane plus turning lanes, and there people have been wanting like a portion light because there have been so many accidents there. But what the people have heard that it was not enough accidents for them to really put a signal light there. Yeah, th what that is called is called warrants. Um, a, a signal must be warranted to be there. There are minimum levels that must be met. And it's a, it comes down to what is the, the risk that the local government and the state or the state government's going to put on by putting in that traffic signal. Uh, <coughs> there are some things that they could do. And one of the things, the tr intersection of Huntley and Bemis is a good example. Those, the citizen wanted a traffic signal there. They, they did not meet its warrants. So they came back and said, we can do these other things instead to help Im improve traffic flow. Uh, yes, yes, because they have stop signs. Mm -hmm. Of course, people don't always be considerate and one go, the next one go. It's right next to the mill, mm -hmm. the paper mill. Right. So it's very busy there. And there's always a lot of accidents there. And I know some, uh, some Things that they've been starting to do in other areas of the state is um, making putting more rumble strips down. Um, other things to warn warn drivers that there's something up ahead. You need to be uh, paying attention. Um, so that might be something we could recommend at that location. Thank you very much, Corey. Thank you. going to any public hearing, public meeting, open something that you can. Um, sometimes I'm the only person at an event. Sort of sad that the public doesn't come out and say what they want. That's one of the reasons why I've been having our local officials and, and representatives of the government agencies come and talk to us so that you can see that there are other places for you to give your input um, and it's very valuable because if we don't say what we want, a traffic signal or a something, there's no way for them to know. One thing I forgot to mention, Gretchen, in the last year we've done an extra effort to other, find other ways to reach out to the public. And if you're on Facebook or Twitter or all those things, we post more information to our Facebook website than any place else. Uh, because that is an easy way for us to get information out there. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Yeah. Uh, um, the MPO and, and the Southern Regional, uh, Southern Georgia Georgia Regional. Regional Commission um, have uh, actually great information and a, a new organization on Facebook. The Board of Elections is new to Facebook, and I asked them why did they go there, and they said because we can update Facebook in a more timely fashion than we can work with the county to update our page. So they are now updating their stuff regularly on Facebook. So, get our county governments using technology um, effectively. Uh, officers reports, Dr. Marks. Uh, we have uh, all funding for local candidates coming up the last week of the month, uh, August 26th to 30th. Uh, starts Monday, Monday morning at 9 o'clock, closes Friday at noon. Uh, and we have a number of local elections, uh, uh, positions that are up for, up for election. Uh, let me run through those. Uh, this is very important because if you, know, if you are interested or you know anybody who is interested, uh, Dr. Richard Sager is, uh, Dick Sager is the uh, chair, uh, vice chair for our qualifying. Uh, please talk with him. He is experienced at uh, at campaigns and can really, really help you or whoever you want to encourage uh, figure out what to do to, to get elected. Uh, the positions that are up for election uh, this year in, in November, qualifying at the end of this month, are in uh, Valdosta City Council, uh, Districts 2, 4, and 6, are currently held by Deidre White, Alvin Payton Jr., and Robert Mills, respectfully. 
on the Valdosta School Board, Districts 1, 2, and 3, currently held by Annie Fisher, Vanessa Lucas, and Warren Lee, respectively. In the city of Hare, the position of mayor, uh, Wayne, Wayne Bullard is the incumbent. Uh, and on city council in Hare, districts one and four, that's Terry Benjamin and Rose Adams. Currently in Lake Park, uh, mayor and all four council members are up for election. They see that elections in, in Lake Park repeatedly. Uh, current, current mayor is Eric Schindler. Uh, council members are Sandy Sherrill, uh, Russell Lane, Shane Moss and David uh, White Whitfield. Uh, and finally, in Dasher, uh, Mayor and Post 1 and 2 of City Council, uh, Mayor uh, G.R. Holton, and Post 1 and 2 currently held by Julian Copeland and Donald Bryan. Uh, so, oh, oops. And in Robert, uh, we have three council, three council members up for election. Uh, that's Jason Tatum, uh, Sam Fleming, and Jessica Brandley's uh, position. So there is a lot of local government positions that are open for election. This is, a, a, as they say, off year for elections. There aren't any statewide or federal elections this year, but there are local elections. These positions on the city council and on the school boards directly affect all of our citizens. So anything that you can do to get involved, or to get others involved, you see me, or see Gretchen, or see, see Dick Sager about running for these offices. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dick Sager is our qualifying chair, and he serves on the Historic Preservation Commission, which meets exactly at this place over in the City Hall Annex. So um, if you want to talk to him about qualifying, uh, just the dash over there and uh, see him at Historic Preservation, or ring him up. Our membership chairman is Amanda Hall. She's a local veterinarian, and she's texted me. She's still at the office. So uh, Amanda was out this weekend with me at the Hunter Blackman uh, Barbecue, along with uh, Van Gibbs and Emily Rogers. We registered voters out there. Um, we let people know that the Democratic Party is alive and well in South Georgia, and people were excited to see us there. Uh, we will next register voters at the South Georgia Pride Festival. We're actually going to have a booth there on September the 21st. Um, and the last day to register to voters for this election is October the 7th. Uh, so, do we have any members at this time who would like to be heard? Oh, to Marcus, come and talk to us. How's everybody doing? All right. I'm going to try not to take up much of your time. Uh, couldn't help but over here, uh, the concern about Clyde Mill, the paper mill. I uh, actually sent a request to the county manager back in March. Uh, it was returned. Um, GDOT said they're going to look at some alternative ways of improving intersection, such as delineators, and they're going to put a right drop lane um, hitting, I want to say, south and northbound, um, and some raised um, little poles because evidently they've been knocked down. So every day I usually have it in that briefcase, but the one day I don't have it. Um, but I do have it if you want to see it yourself in, in writing. So. Um, thank you. I just want to thank everybody for uh, continuing to support um, this community coming out. Uh, like Gretchen says, a lot of times you look up, you just see she heard. Um, but it's better when you see even more of everyone here. Um, unlike a lot of the other previous commissions, I tend to bring a different perspective uh, to the table. I'm, I'm more of a family man. Uh, I, out of all of the commissioners, I have a very young family, down to a two-year-old. Um, and, and so as a result, I tend to uh, do and see things that other people don't see. Uh, I represent Super District 4, which is half of the county, and majority of the urban portion of Lowndes County, and ultimately the most diverse part of Lowndes County. My son is in third grade. We went to the open house today. Uh, they told us uh, they're going to be using iPads this entire year, every student. Something to think about. This, this is things that ring in my mind all the time when I talk about you know, trying to move Lowndes County forward. The technology has to be there. We've got to start thinking beyond just what we see. The infrastructure's got to be here. Like I said the technology, internet, all of that has to be here. And most importantly, jobs. If I expect for them to stay around here once they graduate or attend this school. So 
I just appreciate if you all continue to support me as I continue to push forward with trying to get us to accept some of the change. Um, you know, when you're out and about, if you don't mind, travel different routes. Go to different places you don't normally go. Say, if you don't go to the mall, if you don't come downtown, do it sometime. Or go to the east side of town on some of those roads uh, that you never go on, and you'll see something different. I say this because I work in traffic division. I work in traffic engineering, right? And I don't see the traffic nothing like I do in the evenings. I went out a couple months back after hours, and I got to see what the citizens really experience. And it's a lot different than what you see on a computer screen, uh, what you're looking at from a distance on paper. It's, it's totally different. So I just encourage everybody to do that when they get some time, because we get at the point now that you know, traffic timing is not going to heal everything. We've got to look at widening roads to accommodate the, the growth. You know, because as uh, Corey was talking about, you know, they're a planning organization. But we all know planning is nothing if you don't have funding. You got to get funding. Uh, a lot of the things that I saw on the teach class list, I like uh, a lot of the projects. Therefore, I try to pursue some of them uh, recently. And they're still up in the air. And not to harp on the past, but the reality of it is, a lot of great projects have been on all of these lists from a lot of great commissions and everything. And you know what? We went to our budget retreat, and we went to the splash meeting, and I'm talking about projects that were on lists from the very first splash when they had splash in Lowndes County. Still on that list. Somehow everybody else still got bumped to the side, or the funding wasn't there, or excuse after excuse after excuse. You know, which makes me say, what's going to happen if I leave office? 